Hello class, today we're going to be looking at chapter 4, working as a professional service technician in the sales and service industry. Uh, a couple of things we look at guys, um, of course our area is a big broad field, um, but uh, one that we look at particularly well, and I know we're going to school for this, um, to hopefully pursue a uh, associate's degree to get where you know more or less how everything's working on every specific vehicle, in the subsystems of, of the particular vehicle that you're working on. But also, uh, there's also another aspect of it, which is the communication part of it, of being professional. Um, being a professional technician means a lot. Um, you know, of course, the more you take your job serious, uh, while you're doing the repair work, uh, a couple of things can come from that. Number one, um, less comebacks you get, the more you get recognized as a, uh, well-grounded technician, uh, the more money you can make for yourself, and that's what we're looking at doing here, because that's why you're coming to school here, uh, is to gain knowledge uh, in the specific course that we have here to broaden your knowledge and be able to return your investment back to it by uh, making money out in the field. Um, on the PowerPoint on Chapter 4 that I have in Module uh, 3, we're looking at the different types and areas uh, of what it looks like to be a professional service technician. Um, professionalism, of course, you know, it, it has a lot to do with what we're looking at, your personal credibility and how you're doing things, um, becoming practice uh, consistency with your re uh, diagnosis, your service and repair procedures, following the correct procedures uh, so you don't get a whole bunch of comebacks. That's kind of what we're looking at and wanting to do here. Uh, developing your technical expertise. Of course, we got to go for training, got to go to school, um, become a subscription uh, monthly avid reader like I am with uh, Motor or Motor Age. Uh, those are two typical um, magazines that technicians can get for free. If you go into motor.com, www.motor.com or www.motorage.com, uh, you can go in there and you can uh, sign up and register for uh, free monthly issues. Uh, if you work in a shop somewhere, uh, they'll just give you the, some, uh, some of the information you got to put on there in order to qualify to get the free uh, subscriptions. I've been a, a long, long time subscription to Motor Magazine since the 90s. So, and I still get my monthly issues uh, sent to me. So, uh, they're also available online. So, you can look at some of the articles uh, online. And all it is is update training, update information. Uh, for the independent side of the service area. Now, obviously, if you work in a dealership, you will be going through their specific training, dealership specific training. We will be taking some online courses. Uh, and while you're doing that, you're actually getting paid for that, which is good. Uh, so many online courses you can get uh, will help you towards uh, uh, going to the next echelon in your pay grade. Uh, plus, there are several uh, instances where you have to complete some online coursework before you actually go do a hands-on training at a specific location. Like you see we have here, we have the Ford uh, Service Training Center on the, on the uh, very broad right-hand corner. We've got the General Motors on this side over here. So those guys, when you see them come in, uh, typically they're coming in for some online training, I mean, uh, for some hands-on training because they've done all the requirements of the online training. So now they're going to come in for the hands-on training and get tested out. And once they get tested out and complete the module, um, you know, then they're ready to go out and work on the particular subsection area that they came in for. So a um, couple of things, become a teammate also. Uh, you kind of want to be a, a teammate with some of your coworkers. You don't want to be an individual. It uh, doesn't work too good in a work environment, especially in a dealership. Okay. Um, you know, be polite, be friendly. Now, the other person doesn't want to be friendly with you, that's okay. But you still have to be professional. So, um, in other words, if he's working on a specific uh, part of a vehicle and he needs assistance and he asks you, yeah, go ahead, go ahead and help him because you never know when you might need his help. But uh, if he's one that says, hey, don't bother me, I got, you know, just let him go, okay? Uh, learned that a lot working in a dealership, so kind of just got to, you know, Keep that in mind. Uh, be honest and keep your word. Uh, don't cheer on your customer. Do the specific job that's required of you to do on a particular work order. Okay. Um, 
repairs and, uh, and documentation is very important and key and critical in the dealership as well as any type of fleet work, uh, independent shop as well because uh, as an expert witness that I've seen uh, going to uh, working for four different lawyers, I've seen work orders come in where the technicians forgot to document certain things on a work order. And that kind of, he came back and, and got them. So um, documentation is key and critical uh, for everything that we do on a vehicle, okay? Uh, your general shop and uh, personal appearance, you know, clean shop and uniform, you know, we don't like to wear grease on ourselves. Uh, that's not the image that we like to perceive. You know, as a customer, customers don't want to see that on technicians. They don't want to see grease all over their, their shirts and, and face and, and what have you. So, uh, you know, I wore long sleeves and I, I rode them all the way in the summertime to about right here. Uh, so from here on down, I was getting dirty pretty good, but, you know, I hardly wore it at all. Uh, specifically because, I, you know, I always kept myself clean when I'm on work area. Okay. Uh, Perception of a messy shop is not good for a customer. Uh, they do not want to see grease or any type of marks inside their cars, uh, on the door jams, on the steering wheel, on the carpet, on the seats. So we want to make sure we have seat uh, seat covers, floor mats, and uh, wheel, steering wheel covers as well. Okay, so a lot of the dealerships already have that for you here. Um, it's a good idea to put those on. I always wear, work with fender covers. I. I preach that quite a bit uh, on working on vehicles here. Uh, we want to make sure we put fender covers on the vehicle so we don't scratch up the paint. The next thing, we, the last thing we need to do is to uh, own up a free paint job for a customer that really didn't need it. But it was through our ne negligence that we did not use fender covers. So use fender covers. Uh, communication skills. Uh, you may come to a point where the the customer does not want to talk to a service advisor. They want to talk to the person working on their car. So therefore, you know, they may ask you to come to the service bay. You will have an opportunity to talk to a customer, uh, listen to what the customer's got to say, uh, based on your diagnosis, give them an accurate diagnosis of the vehicle. Okay. It is up to them whether or not they want to get their repair done or not, but you need to be aware and understand and knowledgeable. If they decline the service, you need to let them know why they need to get it done and give it a list of priorities. You know, is it very important or is it something that uh, could wait a couple of weeks, uh, maybe next month or immediately? So those are some of the things that they're gonna depend on you for your knowledge and expertise. Uh, reading and writing, uh, you know, you can't get away from it. We gotta read information every time in a service manual. Uh, writing, we have to document everything on a work order. So make sure we do a good job of, of doing complete sentences and, um, and document, documenting everything that we see on a vehicle. And even if it's good or bad, we still got to document properly on a work order. Um, of course, the three C's that we see all the time are the, are the concern, the cause, and the correction on a work order. We need to identify that and we need to know the three C's. Okay, That's very, very important to know that. Um, the other thing we look at also is estimating a repair. You know, how much does it cost to do a particular brake job? How much does it cost to do a valve cover gasket? Whatever the case may be. Uh, we need to make sure that we understand the parts and labor costs and uh, put everything together before we tell the customer exactly an estimate of what it's going to cost to fix the vehicle. Do not tell the customer it's going to cost you this much to fix it because they're going to expect to pay only that much. Okay, there's things that can take place and transpire in the uh, in lieu of the repair. Uh, a bulk could get damaged because it's stripped out uh, prior to service. You want to put that on the work order, but the customer has to be become aware of, and you're going to have to fix it, which means you're going to have to charge them for it. Okay, so those are a couple of things that we look at. Of course, all data and only any uh, parts and labor guide will give that information for us. Okay. Um, so a, a couple of things, guys, uh, like I said, a service technician is usually responsible for keeping his or her work area clean and tidy. Good housekeeping includes the following, the clean floor, items kept off the floor. You know, be clean. I had two bays in the dealership when I worked at Fiesta Lincoln Mercury Dodge. And uh, I didn't have a porter come clean up after me. I cleaned up my own two bays. So, uh, you know, it shows professionalism. Uh, it shows to the customer when they come by and when they want to take a look at their vehicle while you're working on it, 
or while you're in the process of showing them what's wrong with their vehicle, that it's not a mess, okay? Uh, dirty floor is a liability, okay? And uh, that can create a lawsuit for you. And I've seen that happen uh, in, in the dealership. And I worked at Nissan, a good buddy of mine, a six foot uh, four, 285 pounder, um, was going to get some parts in the parts department. And what happened was there was some antifreeze that was spilled in the drive and he wound up slipping on it and he wound up cracking his tailbone. So uh, he had to be immediately rushed to the hospital and he was out for a good long time. Uh, all because somebody had some antifreeze spilled in the drive in the driveway over at the Nissan dealership and you know they didn't pick it up or clean it up. So he wasn't aware of it as he was glancing down to his work order uh, and walking towards the parts department there. So you know keep it neat, keep it clean. Uh, those are key critical things. Uh, also, when you're working and come, you know, after a period of time, your service manager, whether you know it or not, they will look at how you work your production for the week, for the quarter, uh, you know, monthly and quarterly. And so there's an informal evaluation that they will perform on you, uh, usually up to the first 90 days. You know, after that, there's a, a, a formal evaluation where the shops will come in and give you a written uh, review of what you're doing and your productivity, where you're at, where you need to be at, or uh, if you're exceeding where you're supposed to be at uh, when you get hired. And uh, that's the telltale whether or not you get that increase in pay or not. Okay, if they see your productivity go up, um, then chances are, hey, you know what, it's time for you to get a raise. You know, you don't have to go asking for a raise. They will come to you and let you know, hey, your productivity is good this week. It's been good for the month. We're going to give you a bump and increase. So those are some of the things that uh, a lot of dealerships are going through. They like to take care of the technicians. As long as you do your job and doing the acting professionally in a work environment, they're going to take care of you pay-wise. Okay. So um, there's a, a sample of the evaluation on the PowerPoint. Of course, there are the four questions that are at the bottom of it. Uh, go ahead and take that time to answer those questions and, and upload them to me, okay? Um, and we will look at uh, going on to chapter 17, which is gonna be um, the maintenance part of it, okay? Y'all guys have a good day.